Welcome everybody to the 40 Finance Channel. My name's Jeff Beers. Today I've got five tech stocks for you that analysts project a price growth, stock price growth of 15% or more. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but if you've looked at the tech sector recently, it's been up really big. So trying to find underperformers and undervalued growth, if you will, is not easy. But I've got five tech stocks today that analysts think still have some room to go. All right, first on the list today is a company called NetApp. And NetApp provides cloud-based services, or I should say services to power the cloud for commercial groups. And basically what this means is it, you have your cloud, your AWS or whatnot, but then you have software and systems beneath that cloud that help people share within a company, help people share documents and data within the cloud, transport those documents and data to other people. So really interesting uh, cloud provider, but a little bit in a different uh, niche than say the big dogs like AWS and Microsoft. From a stock perspective, Net NetApp sits at $59.42 right now. They have a PE ratio of 1318. The forward PE is 1082. So I'm always looking for the forward PE to be going down and that's what we see here. And frankly, since the start of the year, Net NetApp exploded up to about $80 a share. Now they're coming back down at 59.42 and we're starting to get in a range here where it's a really good deal uh, to get into NetApp. If you're familiar with the cloud industry and the technology that goes into it, what we have here right now is perhaps some undervalued opportunity. All right, back checking with the Tip Ranks Best Analyst dashboard that I use here. And looking across the analysts, we got seven buys, two holds, and one sell. But the median upside target for the stock is 20%. You also have a high bar of $86 and one low of $55. So right off the bat, you've got about, say, nine analysts between the buys and the holds that are given a median price target of 20.83%. That's a pretty good projection for a tech stock right now with where the market sits. And again, this is over a 12-month span, so it's not overnight riches. I'd say that all these stocks that I cover, you're looking at long-term holds. We're trying to get after the 12 months when the capital uh, gains tax drops to 10%. So we're looking 12 months out. That's what Tip Ranks looks at. Uh, so 20% potential opportunity here for NetApp. Okay, number two on the list is a stock I've covered before, My Tech Systems. My Tech Systems has an image identity verification software, basically where you can take a picture of your face with the phone or do a recording of your face and then they can resolve your identity with that application. Very helpful for security purposes and definitely something that's gonna be growing you know, over the next five to seven years. My Tech right now is not produced any profits. So they don't have a PE ratio uh, looking backwards, but the forward PE, it comes in at a pretty nice margin in 1987. So that's a pretty big flip of the switch from unprofitable to 1987 on a PE. So things are looking good. And similar to NetApp, they've had a little bit of a dip. So they reached a high this year in the neighborhood of $13. They've come down a little bit, I would say, over the past month or so, and now it's starting to creep back up. So the low has been as low as $6 on a 52-week range. Most recently, though, they've dipped around the $8 mark. Now they're creeping up to 10, and it could be time if you want to ride the train up and get a couple of easy profits. If you believe in what MyTech's doing, this could be a good, cheap stock to look at. On the tip rank side of things, we got four of the best performing analysts who follow this company. You got an upside target of 41%. That puts you at $15.13. The high bar is an even $20, so that's even significantly more. Um, and you got a low bar of $12.50, which is still above today's price in the $10 range. So MyTech Systems has some support from analysts. 
opportunity to get some good gains in the tech sector. As always, make sure you do your own research. Make sure you understand the risks of single stock exposure, what could go wrong with the company, those types of things. But from a, from a broad view, my tech falls into a category of tech stocks with good potential over the next 12 months. All right, jumping into a couple of behemoths now. We got Salesforce, ticker symbol CRM. Salesforce, of course, helps businesses and sales companies manage their industry contacts, help people through the funnel of actually buying, cloud-based solution, subscription-based uh, software, recurring revenues, it's a great model. They're right in there with Adobe as far as software companies that are just tearing it up right now. And what you've seen so far this year, it's probably the, the riskiest stock on this board right now with a PE over 100. So not exactly in my wheelhouse as far as a comfort zone, but you have a forward PE that drops by, guys, it drops you know, 65 points down to a forward PE of 45.30. That's some super promising news. And with the subscription model, where the recurring revenues are really locked in tight, you have less of a risk of, of a catastrophic failure where, where Salesforce would go down. However, anytime you're at a PE at this level, you should definitely understand the balance sheet, what are their future plan growths, things like that. One side note for Salesforce is it really hasn't grown much this year. So you see on the one year chart coming out of January, like everybody else, it went back up to the levels from the year before. And it sort of hovered around this 155, 160 range. So we haven't yet seen a huge quarter that, that rockets it into orbit, if you will. Maybe that quarter's coming. Let's take a look at what the analysts think. All right, so on the tip rank side, we have 21 best performing analysts who are covering the stock. We've got 20 buys, one hold, median price target of 182.79. That is a 16% increase. You have a high bar of 200 and a low of 169. So it's always good outside of these analysts and they all have different price targets. But if you got the low guy coming in with a percentage gain on the, on the stock price as it stands today, now that's usually a pretty good sign. And don't forget with Salesforce, we're talking about a massive company here. So if you're gonna eke out a stock gain of 16.6% in this tech environment where a lot of things are overvalued and a company of this size can give you a 16% return, things are going really good. All right, next up is a stock that's one of my favorites in the tech sector, and that is Google. So I, I just feel like every time I turn on the TV, you got plenty of news about Amazon, you got plenty of news about Facebook, and Google just sort of simmers off to the side despite having a lot of existential plays in other places. You know, we know their advertising play, we know their search play, but don't forget that Google also has the Waymo investment. They have driverless car technology. They own Google Maps, which should not be understated because as these rideshare services and driverless cars come about, no one has mapped the United States better than Google when it comes to streets. From a stock perspective, Google right now sitting at $1,130. You got a PE ratio of 28.35, forward PE going down to 2103. And this year, and in fact right now, they're coming off a massive dip. All right, so just like everybody else, they went up and saw some peaks shortly after January. They've dropped down almost to $1,000 earlier this year because of some regulation and privacy plays that seem to be plaguing this industry right now. But I think investors have sort of turned around and said, gosh, compared to the rest of the market, Google's a really good deal. So you see this little upward swing we've had recently. And guys, I really do think that this is one of the easiest wins in the market right now, particularly if you're talking about 24, 36, 48 months out. Uh, Google is a great place to be. And even if you don't want to own it as an individual stock, you could look at like the NASDAQ QQQ, you could look at some other ETFs 
that hold Google as a primary asset and bank on it that way. All right, looking at the tip ranks analysts, we got 26 of them that cover this uh, internet behemoth. And you got a median upside of 19%, price target of 1347. That's the great thing about a thousand dollar stock. Even a 19% gain feels like a windfall. So you're basically jumping $200, right? Uh, high bar of $1,500. And on the low side, you got 1150, which is just about where the stock is today. So definitely look into Google. There's far riskier plays out there than Google. And I would make the argument, although it's you know up for debate, I think Google's in a better place privacy-wise than Facebook is. You know, I think for both of those stocks, they're all gonna overcome it. And it's just lawmakers that don't understand the technology and they don't understand that people are opting into these things. But between Facebook and Google from a litigation standpoint, I would side with Google as being able to come out a little bit in better shape than a Facebook would. All right, last one on our list of potential tech stock big gainers. We got Electronic Arts, who is of course a video game maker. Uh, and with EA right now, you've got a couple things on the plate. They have their Fortnite rival, uh, which the name's escaping me but they have a Fortnite rival game that's out there that is doing well and just released like sort of a season two, so to speak. Got off to a bit of a rocky start on some technological problems, but it's up and running now. And perhaps the biggest thing coming out here in Q3 from a revenue standpoint is the new Madden NFL game, which of course means that all these football fans are gonna be buying EA products in mass over the next 60 to 90 days. From a stock perspective, you got a PE ratio of 2628. The forward PE going down, down to 1733. So it looks really good from that standpoint. And the one year chart is it looks pretty good too. So you had a little rise here in January. Video game stocks got absolutely blasted over Christmas time to another level than just the regular stock market. So the whole industry is sort of in flux. If you think about GameStop, uh, I'm probably losing business to cloud purchase games. Uh, we're in between platforms right now. It's another year away to the new platforms. So video games are in a really weird spot and they recently got hammered. And what you're seeing now with EA and some others is it's just sort of flatline, but we're not worried necessarily about today. We're thinking, right, over 12 months from now. So what is over 12 months from now is 2020, the new platforms come out. We're trying to get to that point with a nice gain in our hands after holding the stock for 12 months or more. And I think EA has that potential. All right, on the tip rank side of things, we got 16 analysts who cover the stock. You got 12 buys four holds, median price target today, 29.43% on the up. Would put the price at 113.25. You have a high bar of $130 and you have a low bar of 95. Once again, the, even the lowest projected analyst comes in above today's stock price. So hey, EA, not without risk. No single stock is without risk but you kind of look at the charts, you dig in, you do your research, you figure out, do I believe in their business plan? And you back check against some of the analysts and what they think. And in all these stocks that I've shown here today, the future looks pretty good over the next one to two years. So there you have it guys, five tech stocks that still have some room to run, despite the fact that the tech industry is on cloud nine right now in the market, there's still value plays out there. You gotta dig a little deeper like I did here today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you can, support the channel. I really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video.